My mama's name was Myrtle Elizabeth Shaw McCuller, and she was born about 1909. She, she lived a, a powerful, powerful life, a, a life of faith that seemingly in the old days that you had to believe God for everything that you had, and she truly did. When we would go to church, she would, of course, take her Bible with her and, and have her Bible, and she would look through her Bible, and she said angels would come and put money in her Bible so that she could give. We didn't have a lot of money. Daddy did not, uh, you know, he didn't make a lot of money. We had a all right living, but not just a lot of extra money to give, and she loved to give. And so the angels would come and put money in her Bible every, almost every service. And I, whenever we'd start taking the offering after she told me about this, and, and uh, also I'd go over and sit by her, and my eyes were just so big and just waiting to see uh, how much money that they put in there. Uh, and it might be a dollar, it might be $5. And, and back there, if you gave $10, that was a lot of money. But uh, she said, no. I said, well, Mama, where did the angels get the money? Do they go get money from other people? She said, oh, no. They would never go and get money from other people. They go out and find it on the highway or in somebody's, uh, you know, in somebody's yard that they don't know about. But anyway, there's lots of money just laying out there, and the angels know where they are. They, they can see it, and they just pick it up and come put it in my Bible. And, and I thought that was quite amazing. That, uh, uh, that she just believed that. One night she was laying in the bed and she just raised her hands and she said, Jesus, I want to be filled so bad with the Holy Ghost. Would you just fill me with the Holy Ghost? And all of a sudden she just started, you know, talking in tongues and started in, and she was just so excited. So she got up and she told her husband, she said, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Come lay right where I was laying. And so he laid down in the bed exactly where she was, and he started speaking in tongues. And so they called, they got out and got all the neighbors and told them what had happened. And so every person in the whole area would come to her house, lay on her side of the bed exactly like she was, and they'd be filled with the Holy Ghost. It was quite funny. But that's how, that's how things were, were back then. We, they were not taught exactly what was to be happening, but the Holy Ghost always came, and Jesus always came and, and, and filled them. There, I cannot ever remember a day or night that Mother didn't pray for her kids and called out every one of their names. And she always prayed that they even, oh, listen, she prayed them through, uh, you know, car accidents and, and near-death experiences and... Uh, uh, you know, the police would come to our door, knock on our door and say, you know, Donnie's been in a bad wreck and, and it wasn't no time till he's walking up to the house. Nothing wrong with him. And, and that's happened with two or three of my brothers that they were in bad wrecks, but they got out of the car and walked home. <laughs> you know, this was just the way it was. Every one of the, her 12 children were saved Almost all but one was filled with the Holy Ghost. They all went to heaven. I only have one brother left. He lives in Oklahoma, Jesse, and uh, uh, me. And that's all that's left. But all of us are going to go to heaven, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, saved. And, and so this is, uh, this is because of her prayer. After she had went on to heaven, I had a, um, several years later, I had kind of rough time with it. I was really having a rough time with her being gone. And, and so I had a dream. And in this dream, she came to me. And she said, well, B, let's get our Bible. And I want to read the Bible to you. And so she got it out. She turned over uh, to Psalms 27. And it was just as clear as could be. I, I, and she read it to me. She read me the whole, the whole story. Uh, the whole the whole chapter and uh, uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is my light uh, he is the strength of my heart he is the strength of my life and she went on down and read the whole thing and uh, it's the verse 10 it said when my mother and my father forsake me then the Lord will take me up 
and she said, B, I want you to quit grieving and I want you to let the Lord completely take you now and you don't rely on anything else but uh, this was after even after Daddy had died and both of them were gone. And uh, it was such a, 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 I was healed. I was healed completely when she read the Bible to me. And from that time on, I just had great joy uh, about her, her and Daddy both being in heaven. My earliest memories of knowing the Lord and encountering the presence of the Lord was definitely in my home. My mom and my dad, oh my word, they made it a priority that we would have experiences with the presence of God in our home growing up on a regular basis. It wasn't just every once in a while or when there was a crisis. I remember being about five years old and waking up in the middle of the night to my mom praying in the Holy Spirit over me. And I really believe that these memories of prayer meetings in our home and um, the priority to be in the house of God, they were, we were always at church, <laughs> but we loved church. It was awesome. We had an awesome children's church. We had awesome teachers who were excited about teaching. So that was really powerful um, influence in my life for obvious reasons. Um, and when we were growing up, we were always part of like Holy Ghost filled churches and churches that welcome the presence of God during the services. And so I really never knew anything else but revival or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that so completely shaped and formed how I wanted to raise my kids. I wanted them to know that God is real and that he, he loves to lavish his presence upon us. He's not withholding anything from us. And one thing that my mom was really big on was, um, I mean, nurturing. She was such a nurturer. In fact, we had a joke that you give it to my mom, Kay, and she's gonna nurture whatever it is and back to health or further into health. I mean, you, anytime you got around her, it's what can I do? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Would you, would you like a yummy cup of coffee? I mean, it didn't matter who it was. Growing up, we always had teenagers staying at our house that were having a tough time in their own home um, that call my mom, mom. Um, to this day, I have close friends who their lives were so turned around because of the ministry of my mom and my dad. And I'm so thankful for the example that they gave us that everybody is worth seeking after. That there's nobody that should be without a place for a holiday. We shared many holidays, most holidays, with people that were not in our family. And the, um, but I would definitely say that there were many times when times got tough but they never lost sight of who God is. I remember one particular night when some sickness had tried to attach itself to my mom. She was dealing with some bronchial infections and it was very clear that she needed um, a lot more prayer support. And my dad, and it was during a winter storm and the phones were down and my dad and I got on our knees and I remember it like it was yesterday that we sat, we were on our knees in the hallway of our home and it was the middle of the night and we began to pray together. We prayed in the Holy Ghost and we spoke the word over her. And the next morning when she woke up, she was 100% better. I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful that I have that legacy to pass on to my own children and that I was saved from the world 
because my mom and my dad purposed in their hearts that they would create a love for Jesus in our home.